Okay, so dear brothers, uh, today we're going to see one uh, important uh, subject that is uh, given to us in the Old Testament. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> this uh, subject uh, is based upon the experiences of uh, people of Israel when they were uh, in Egypt. <clears throat> we all know very well <clears throat> that uh, people of Israel, they dwelt in Egypt and they were uh, persecuted uh, severely by the Pharaoh, the king uh, of uh, Egypt. When Joseph was there, when everything went favorably, so the people of Israel were in a very high position. But uh, when the Pharaoh who lived uh, during uh, Joseph's days, when he died, when Joseph died, the situations uh, changed uh, suddenly. And instead of uh, they being in a good position, they were lowered, they were subdued, they were harassed, they were made to work hard labor, all kinds of labor they were uh, made to work. So they were uh, persecuted severely, <clears throat> they were made to be bond servants, and uh, food was not given sufficiently. And they were, you see, very in a terrible condition. And that is the time that people of Israel, because of the torture of uh, Pharaoh, they cried unto the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy on us. Uh, give us deliverance uh, from this bondage of Egypt. Uh, you see, and uh, you see, clutches of uh, uh, Pharaoh, the king of uh, Egypt. Uh, and they cried for nearly more than 215 years. So, after many, you see, years, God heard their cry. And that is the time that God raised a prophet uh, whose name was Moses. God chose him to be the deliverer of uh, Israel. You see, that is the time that God sent Moses and told him to go and speak to Pharaoh. Tell him to release uh, my children. Tell him to release my people so they may come and worship uh, you see, me. And uh, Pharaoh, along with uh, Aaron, they came and stood uh, <clears throat> before, uh, you see, Pharaoh. And, uh, you see, they told, uh, Moses told, uh, huh? Pharaoh, release uh, my people. Let my people go. Uh, they may worship the Lord. Uh, you see, then Pharaoh said, uh, why should I let my uh, people go? Why should I let your people to go from Egypt? Who are you? Where you come here? Well, come here to give uh, commands to me. Who are you? He told, you see, Pharaoh himself was like a god in Egypt. He told, who is your god? What do I know about your god? I don't know any god. I am like a god itself in Egypt. So don't come here. Uh, he told him to, you see, go from his presence. That is the time uh, that, uh, you see, when uh, he, they were cast out from his presence, the whole Egypt of his plague with ten plagues. We have read that one about the ten plagues uh, in books of Exodus uh, from uh, chapter 7 to chapter 11. <clears throat> the plagues were so severe that uh, the people of Egypt could never bear it. Even sometimes the Pharaoh itself was so fed up, uh, you see, that uh, he wanted to uh, let his people go. You see, uh, do you remember, brother, what are the ten plagues? Gopal, brother, do you have any idea what are the ten plagues? Uh, uh, changing uh, water into blood. Very good. And fro uh, sending frogs. Good. And uh, uh, like uh, grasshoppers. Yes, very good. And uh... okay, let us see in order. See, first uh, was that the water uh, turned into blood, and the second was that uh, the frogs uh, came out and covered the entire land of Egypt. Uh, imagine, you see, they considered the Nile as Nile goddess, and once that goddess uh, began to spew blood. Uh, it was very stink uh, in their, uh, you see, sight, uh, and they could not purify that water. The this plague was affected for both uh, people, the Jewish people as well as the people of Egypt. 
And the second plague, as the water served, you see, were made of blood, uh, immediately uh, the frogs that were living in the water that came out uh, from water and began to enter Egypt. Uh, you see, and the Egyptians considered frog as their god, and it was uh, very difficult for, him, for them to even kill the frogs or even cast away. So they had to bear it. Uh, and uh, after this uh, plague, uh, uh, lies uh, claim, you see, uh, a thing which comes in the hair, no? So lies, uh, not small, small, big, big lies. Uh, you see, lies, uh, you see, is to pinch their head and uh, suck all their blood. Uh, you see, and uh, they were so frustrated, uh, uh, you see. So these uh, three uh, plagues were, uh, you see, were common to all the people in Egypt. Uh, it may be a Jewish people or the Israel people. But next the seven plagues which came was particularly targeted only for the Israel people. You see, the fourth one was... Uh, you see the flies, the flies uh, came, the beetles, uh, you see, it came upon the Egyptians. So, so wherever you saw, there was only flies, 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 uh, maggots uh, everywhere, all the food and everything got uh, infected. It got, uh, you see, rotten. And uh, the fifth, uh, you see, was uh, the disease of the livestock. Uh, once these flies came, of course, automatically what happens, the infection begins to spread. So that infection was so severe that almost all the livestock of the Egyptians were killed. So this is the fifth plague. And the sixth one was uh, the boils uh, upon all the body of the Egyptians. Uh, you see, the boils were so severe, so fat, uh, um, that uh, it began to itch them uh, terribly. And uh, they used to begin to scrub, uh, you see, uh, their body with uh, you see, all sorts of things and all. So it, it caused more wound uh, than uh, giving them the relief. The sixth, seventh uh, plague was a hail from, uh, you see, sky. So there was a thunderstorm and the hail, the hail was so big uh, that when it uh, fell upon their head, uh, you see, it almost uh, killed them. So this was the uh, seventh plague. And the eighth plague was locust, which uh, completely destroyed the entire crops of the Egyptians. Uh, and the ninth one was this, uh, darkness which covered the land of Egypt for three days. It was so dark uh, that where the people of Israel stood, you see, they did not get up from uh, that place for uh, three days. They could not move. That's what the Bible says. And the last, uh, you see, and the final plague was the death of the first one. Uh, that is the time that uh, Israel people are coming to celebrate the Passover. Okay. Now, in all these ten plagues, if you observe, when the first plague came, Pharaoh, you see, could not uh, you see, bear it. When it was beyond his limit, he called Moses, uh, you see, and told him, I will let your people go. But uh, pray to the Lord that he may take away this plague. So as soon as uh, Moses prayed, immediately the plague was taken. And as the plague was taken, Pharaoh did not uh, let the people of Israel go. Again, the same cycle continued. So again, God showed his anger. And uh, again, you see, uh, uh, Pharaoh did not uh, leave the people of Israel to go out of uh, Egypt. So he hardened his heart again and again. So this continued, dear brethren, for almost nearly 10 plagues. So it was actually only in the 10th and the final plague that he allowed his people to go away. You see? From Egypt. Okay. But uh, there is one special thing in this plague, sir. See, once when the plague uh, began to come, one upon the other, one upon the other, uh, in a much severe level, you see, the Pharaoh was so stubborn, who never allowed the people of Israel to go out of Egypt and uh, release them from the bondage. You know what happened? Uh, suddenly, you see, Pharaoh began to cool off. You see, Pharaoh began to... You see, cool off uh, and told that uh, he would uh, release the, the people of Israel go and uh, began to bargain with, uh, you see, Moses. Uh, began to uh, offer some compromises uh, to, you see, Moses uh, and try to convince him, uh, you see, uh, to, you see, uh, come to a lower, uh, you see, understanding. <clears throat> Because their demands were uh, high, 
and they demanded that, that they should be compulsory goat of Egypt uh, with entire family, everything. But Pharaoh called them and gave some offers, uh, some compromises. Uh, you see, they would then, but uh, and such compromises, uh, Pharaoh gave four compromises. Uh, so today, our subject is the four compromises, what lessons we have from that one. But uh, unfortunately, you see, as uh, Pharaoh expected, uh, Moses did not compromise for any of the offers which uh, were given from Pharaoh. But instead, you see what happened? Uh, Pharaoh uh, <clears throat> was the one who was uh, getting compromised. Instead of uh, he offering the compromise, he was actually getting compromised uh, for the demands of the people of Israel. So, what is uh, all this mean, sir? Dear brother? What is all this mean? You know, we all know, dear brother, very well, that all the things uh, written in Old Testament, you see, are written for our admonition. Isn't it? Read uh, Romans 15, 4, brother. Go on, brother, can you read Romans 15, 4? Well, there's disturbance in your voice. Go uh, brother, there's disturbance in your voice. I think Mike's some problem is there. Go brother. Is it okay now, brother? Mm -hmm. Romans 14. Romans 15, 4. Romans 15, 4, for uh, whatsoever things were written of our time were written for our learning that we, we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Mm. See, all the things which are written in the four time, the Old Testament, are written for whom? It is written for us, the faithful church, that we through patience have hope, you see, that God will save us, dear friends. So let us see what lessons we have from these four compromises of Pharaoh. You see, we know that the people of uh, children of uh, God, <coughs> they were stuck uh, in Egypt under the bondage of Pharaoh. Similarly, what does it represent? Sir? You see, similarly, this represents the children of uh, you see, God, God's children, today are stuck uh, in the clutches of whom? Uh, Satan. You see, as uh, Pharaoh sat on the throne of Egypt and declared him to be the king and god of, uh, you see, Egypt, uh, similarly, the god of this world, uh, you see, Satan, the god of this world, he claims himself to be the prince of this world. He claims himself to be the god of this world. And under his clutches, uh, all, you see, the people are under him. So, among them, <clears throat> you see, there are few people who want to worship the true Lord, who want to obey the truth, who want to live for the Lord. But uh, will uh, Pharaoh live? No. As Pharaoh did not live during those days, similarly, Satan also will not leave God's children to do the Lord's work, uh, to worship the Lord. Uh, you see, and that is the time that God would begin to punish, you see, Pharaoh, and slowly, you see, Subdue him. So, dear brethren, so the Egypt represents the world. You <clears throat> see, and uh, Pharaoh represents the God of this world. You see, and uh, uh, the people of Israel represents the God's children. So, who does Moses represent? You see, God sent, uh, you see, Moses, and through Moses, uh, he delivered, uh, you see, the people of Israel. Now, you tell me, who does Moses represent here? Who? Jesus Christ. Very good. Uh, Jesus Christ is the one who risked his life and uh, who is one who is rescuing us from this world. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of uh, Egypt? Uh, let us read Revelation 11, 8, brother. Revelation 11, 8. Can you read? Go, go, brother. Hmm. Revelation 11, 8, brother. Hmm. 
and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Uh, spiritually, that city is called as Sodom and uh, Egypt. Uh, correct, no? In that city, who did it? Lord? Jesus. Uh, I mean, did Lord Jesus die? Which city did he die? Israel. Israel. But it says, Bible says Egypt and uh, uh, Sodom? Yes. How? The meaning is given there itself. It says spiritually. That city spiritually is called as Sodom and Egypt. Correct? No? Symbolically. It's not a direct language. Therefore, in the book of Revelation, Egypt and Sodom has a meaning. How do we find it? The clue is given in that verse itself. It says, in that city, our Lord was crucified. Now you tell me, uh, how to crucify our Lord? Hmm? There are two ways to crucify our Lord. You see, one is that you, uh, the people of Israel and the Roman people, they crucified on the literal cross. That is one way of literally killing our Lord Jesus Christ. You see? And that one happened only once in a lifetime, so that can't be repeated at all. But apart from that one, there is other way of killing our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, how do we kill our Lord Jesus Christ? Let us read in Hebrews, <coughs> Hebrews, <coughs> sixth chapter, sixth verse, brother. Hebrews 6, 6, brother. Uh. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Ah, put him to open shame. They crucify our Lord again, it seems. Who are they? You see? Who are they? There is a condition. There are some Christians today who boldly crucify our Lord Daily. You say, Deepa, then how? You know? By not following the truth. Read the verse, brother. It, it starts from verse, uh, <clears throat> you see? 1. Verse 1 to verse 5, brother. Please read. Huh? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, hmm. let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from uh -huh. good works. Ah, see, and see, the Bible says, uh, let us go, let us grow, let us not be in that initial stage. What is the initial stage? You see, huh? laying of the foundation of repentance. Oh, you should repent, you should leave all your sins and come holy. And these are all priests every day in the, all the churches. No? What does the Apostle Paul say? Okay, do it. Uh, but let us grow a little bit further. Leave all these things. This is all a little bit... Uh, Things that are done for a child who comes new to the truth, or babes in Christ. But as we began to live many years in Christianity, we need to grow to the maturity of Christ. We can't simply keep on, uh, you see, feeding upon milk, uh, even when you're growing up. Uh, it will be like a very awkward uh, situation. You see, if a big man uh, keeps on eat, drinking milk in a milk bottle, what will the people think? People think, oh, he's very childish. He's not grown, he's not matured. Christian should be matured. That's what Apostle Paul says. Continue with the next term. Huh? And of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on hands and of resurrections of the dead and of eternal judgment. Hmm. And this will, uh, this will we do if God permit. This we will do. This we will do if God permits. But this is not the main thing. That means what? Apart from this one, there are many more things, uh, you see. But uh, a person who has understood the truth, uh, and if he denies the truth uh, and goes back, uh, he is like crucifying our Lord. Read with the verse uh, 4 and 5. It's given there only. Huh? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tested of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. 
and have tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Mm. Mm. If they shall, uh. if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Uh, this is impossible, he says. To renew, to bring back such a person is impossible. Now, who is this person? Bring back such a person means he says. It is impossible for those who are once enlightened. Once enlightened means what? God has opened our eyes of understanding. We are able to see. You see? Huh? We were living in the world. But what has happened? God has called us from the darkness to light. First stage. See, we are all past this stage. Okay. Second stage, what it says, huh? and have tasted the heavenly gift. Now, what is heavenly gift? What is heavenly gift which God has given us? Huh? Think. I'll give you a clue. Romans 6 chapter is given. Romans 6 chapter. Huh? I'll give you one more clue. Read Romans 6 23 with us. Huh? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our huh? Lord. The gift of God is eternal life. That is the gift. That is the heavenly gift which God has given us. There was no rules that God should forgive us sins, but He has forgiven us sins by sacrificing His only Son on the cross. Second thing, we have received this gift also of forgiveness of sins. Then third, we were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. You see, has God given us the Holy Spirit or not? Yes, yes, given. God has given the Holy Spirit. And because of the Holy Spirit, what we are able to do? Verse 5. And have tasted the good word of God. See? Have, have we tasted the truth? Huh? What did David say? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Correct now? So we have experienced a lot in our life. Huh? Have we tasted the, so many, you see, uh, hard uh, meat uh, subjects? Uh, strong subjects in the Bible? Have we tasted it or not? Yes, brother. Yes, we have tasted it. Uh, then after that one, it says, and the powers of the world to come. Which is the power to come in this world? Which is the next power that is going to come after this uh, destruction of the Satan? Who will come and rule on this earth? Jesus Christ. Ah, after understanding the thousand year rule of Christ, after understanding the kingdom of Christ, after understanding all these doctrines, you see, verse 6 it says, if they shall fall away, if they say that this is all false, this is all truth, no, this is not truth, they all lies and hypocrisy, leave all these things. And if they go back, and if they don't repent, then what are they doing? It seems uh, they are crucifying our Lord again and again on the cross. Uh, this is what is done today in Babylon. You see, where is it is done? It is done in Babylon. That Babylon in God's sight is called as Egypt and uh, what uh, Sodom. Because what? Uh, there is no truth in uh, Egypt. Uh, there is no truth in Sodom. Sodom and Gomorrah, there was only fornication. See, similarly in the churches, what is there? Only mingle with the world. Only eh? for uh, speech sake, uh, it's there. Oh, you should leave all these things and all. Okay. But practically, there is no truth at all. Eh, brethren. Uh, practically, there is no truth. Uh, so, what is the meaning of this uh, Egypt? Uh, and what is the meaning of this uh, Sodom? If you see it, eh, brethren, uh, you see, it means... Uh, the false churches. Uh, it is in these false churches that uh, daily our Lord is being crucified by the false teachings, by the breaking of the bread, uh, breaking it weekly, monthly, whenever they want. Uh, you see, actually, when should we take uh, our Lord's Supper? Uh, is it uh, weekly, monthly, daily, hourly? When? Once a year. Once a year. Uh, isn't it? But taking it daily, 
crucifying our Lord again and again and again. And that's what he says. If you crucify our Lord, it is that city our Lord was crucified. Dear brethren, this is the filthy city. And you know who is the emperor? Who is the king of the city? Who is the king of this Babylon, the false churches? It is who? It is the God of this world. Satan himself who is sitting on the throne, you see, and ruling. Revelation, second chapter, brother. Revelation, second chapter, verse 13. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Uh -huh. Even where Satan's seat is. This is to the, you see, Third church, Pergamos church. So Pergamos church means what? Uh, Satan's seat was there, it seems. So Satan came and dwelt where? Inside the churches. Uh, as the Pharaoh was inside Egypt. Uh, similarly, Satan is today inside the false churches. Where there is no truth. If there is truth, definitely the devil can't be there at all. If the devil is there, that means uh, there is no truth there. If there is no truth, then we need to understand that there is a uh, you see, no God in that one. Who is the ruler, actually? Huh? Pharaoh is there. The God of this world is there. But uh, people of uh, God are there. Not everybody are God's children, but somebody, some people are God's children there. They are there. God knows them. He says, my children, let my people go. God says to eh, the devil, let my people go. You see? Huh? But uh, will Satan live? See, he won't live. Why will he live? Eh? He will be more careful about the persons who listen to the truth. More concerned and more careful that they may not leave their churches, false churches and go to the truth. So he will do all his tricks as much as possible to keep them in the false churches itself. That is the time that God sends Moses. You see? And that is the time that Pharaoh tries to give compromise. Why compromise? Because he knows that he is going to lose quite shortly. Today, we are going to see, we see the conditions in this world. What do we observe? Huh? The God of this world, his power is weaning, coming down one by one. So slowly, Satan will be bound completely and put him to the bottomless pit. So this is work is going on. Our Lord is doing it. But uh, will Satan keep quiet? No. He will target his God's children. He will try to give compromises. He will try to bargain with God's children. That bargain itself is given to us in the book of Exodus. So today we are going to see what are the bargains, what are the compromises, you see, which uh, uh, Pharaoh gave and which Moses agreed or not. And what lessons we have that how Satan tries to give compromise to God's children, but they may not listen to the truth and leave and stand for the truth. Okay, now let us read the first compromise is given in Exodus 20, sorry, Exodus 8 chapter. Exodus chapter 8, <clears throat> verses uh, 25 and uh, 26, brother. Exodus chapter 8, verse 25 and 26, brother. Huh? And Pharaoh called for Moses and, and for Aaron and said, Go ye, uh, sacrifice to your God in the land. Hmm. Uh, hmm. And Moses said, it is okay. not... See, what did uh, Pharaoh say? Huh? Moses requested, leave our children. Leave the people of God so that we may go and worship a one true God. You see, you know, the people of Israel were actually outcast in the sight of uh, Egyptians. They were never allowed inside the Egypt. They were living in the border of Egypt because uh, uh, Bible says... Uh, the shepherds uh, are abomination in the sight of uh, Egyptians. So they would never allow them inside their houses also, not even inside the city. And that is the time Moses requests uh, Pharaoh, leave, we will go and worship the Lord. And uh, as the plagues get severe, no, he could not control it. You see, then he calls uh, Moses and tells, come here. Huh? What do you wanted? He wanted you to worship God. Now, okay, go, go, go. go. Huh? Worship the Lord. Where? Here only. You do your sacrifices to the Lord here itself. Huh? Dear brethren, you know, what offer this is? He is telling, okay, you are telling now you want to worship your Lord. 
Huh? You want to sing praises to your God? Okay, do it here. I have no objection, sir. But where you should do it? Uh, do it in Egypt itself. By offering this one, do you think uh, Pharaoh would have told just bluntly that, okay, go, you do whatever you want. You would have told, don't worry, I'll give you a big land. I will build a big temple, big altar. What all sacrifices you want, you see. Huh? You do where? Here only. Hmm. Similarly, huh? Satan. Oh, what will Satan offer? We comes to know he has come to know that we are listening to the truth. You see, once we listen to the truth, what will happen? The word of God will go inside and start working in us. Huh? When we try to leave this Egypt, this false Babylon, you see, what will Satan do? Will he allow us? He will tell, no, no, you, where you are going? Huh? Sacrifice you only. Huh? You want to offer your body as a willing sacrifice? Offer you only. Do it in the same church. Huh? You, you don't want to believe this false doctrine. Don't believe. Okay? But uh, stay here only. And from here only you try to do your Lord's activities. From here only you see. Huh? Huh? What? Uh, you worship the Lord. Uh, some uh, uh, compromise. Uh, some compromise adjust to the turn. They say, uh, uh, okay, okay, this is very good uh, offer. No? Uh, where the Lord is everywhere we can do it now. Huh? You see, dear brethren, some people are very strict like Moses. No. You see, some people, even as we listen, only one class, they're ready to leave. Let us, you see, uh, when I was listening to the class, only just three classes. The third class itself, the first verse, Jesus gave ransom for all. He died for everybody. So, everybody, you see, is uh, under the salvation of Christ. God has made a plan for them also. You see, they leave the churches. But some are so stubborn that even after listening to the entire truth, they won't uh, quit. Uh. Some say, huh? no, some, some like, some will be like Pharaoh. They'll tell, okay, this is a good offer. We'll stay there and we'll teach them. Where? We will stay there in the fast churches and teach other Christians. Dear brethren, if you stay there after listening to this truth in the false churches, and if you start witnessing to them, will the people keep quiet? No. What will the people do? Now read the verse 26. Read Buddha, Exodus 8, 26. And Moses said, It is not meet, it is not meet so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abominations of the Egyptians to the Lord, to the to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abominations of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? Hmm? Will they keep quiet? They will stone us. Sir, you are telling to stay here only. You are Pharaoh. If we start offering these sacrifices in front of everybody, will they keep quiet? Sir, they will stone us. Similarly, even after listening to the truth, if you stay there only and try to teach them and try to preach to them these things, what will they do? They will stone us. They will stone us with harsh words, with persecutions, mental harassment. You see, therefore, this is not possible. You see, this is not at all possible. You see, uh, uh, there are, uh, you see, uh, then uh, uh, you see what will happen automatically. Uh, if nobody starts to listen, what will happen? Uh, automatically, we will get uh, discouraged uh, and we will get cool off. And we'll begin to think that I, everything is the same, nothing will happen. Come on, let us go. Huh? Wherever uh, the Lord is there, uh, you see, we will work out our salvation, all these things, and Lord will come and we'll try to uh, get uh, dilute inside the church. No, dear Budran, we can't go to the heavenly salvation just like that. Uh, remember the subject. We need to go in the black horse itself to the north country. We need to have the silver coin in our head. Uh, without these things, uh, we can never be the bride. Uh, you see, of Jesus Christ. Uh, huh? uh, we can't be here and there. We should be, you see, taking decisions. Revelation 3.15, brother. Huh? I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wear cold or hot. 
Hmm. Continue. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Hmm. You see, some people become like that only. They become neither hot nor cold. They will try to neutralize there only. Settle there itself. You see, we should be how we should be hot in love, zealous in the Lord. We can't be here and there a cat on the wall. This way, that way. No. We have to be either cold or hot. Be in the truth or not be in the truth. If we try to balance, that is not possible. What did Jesus say? Just because you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew you. I will spew you from the mouth. That means what I will spit to you. What type of language do you have to If Christ spits us, he treats us like that. Can we ever think to be with him? Rule with him. Not possible. Therefore, we will be rejected. Your brain, uh, huh? Can uh, there is a you see uh, a synchronizing or a fellowship between uh, false and the truth? No. Second Corinthians six chapter fourteen to eighteen, brother. Second Corinthians six chapter fourteen to eighteen. Be it not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what commun communion hath light with darkness? See? What clearly says, what fellowship with righteousness and unrighteousness? What uh, unity, communionity with the light and darkness? The light is there. This is the light. Uh, the darkness. How can we, you see, not possible at all. Next brother, continue. Huh? And what concord had Christ with uh, Bel Belial? Or what part ha hath he that believeth with an infil infidel? Yeah. Believer with unbeliever. What uh, relationship has Christ with the Belial? What is the devil? You see? The false and the truth can never meet each other. The brethren. Huh? The Bible says no. You see, you can't partake of the Lord's table as well as the devil's table. Huh? We have to decide whether we need to partake of the Lord's table. Lord's table or the devil's table. Lord's cup is there. Devil's cup is also there. So, we need to decide. You see, how Pharaoh decided to give a temple, an altar, a big place. Similarly, Satan tries to offer us, oh, there are friends here, there are pastors, there are relatives. You see, so many people are there. And that is the, when we try to decide to stand for the truth, that is the time that will give responsibility to us. Why? So we never leave the churches. This is the first compromise. First compromise. You see, but what is Moses say? No, we can't stay. If we stay here, they'll start stoning us. If we stay there and listen to this truth, and try to live a godly life there, that is uh, utterly impossible. What did Jesus say? No man can serve two masters. You see, we need to decide whether we're going to serve the devil or we're going to serve the Christ. Isn't it? We need to decide. We studied the subject of Antichrist. We know very well who is the Antichrist, who is using the Christ name in a false way and preaching Christ. That is uh, uh, the false, which is the truth. So we need to decide whether we're going to stay at any. So, this was the first compromise. But again, after, uh, you see, uh, uh, Pharaoh again called for the second compromise. Uh, let us read the second compromise in Exodus 8, chapter brother. Exodus 8, 28. Mm. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your your God in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away in trade for me. Uh, he said, see, now he is compromising. Not that he is uh, making Moses to compromise, but to Pharaoh himself. Is, okay, you want to go, 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 go. But don't go too far. Huh? Pray for me. Uh -huh. What offer now? Huh? Very good though. Very nice, sweet, cute words. Soft words. Heart, very touching words. Huh? Similarly, eh? you know, what is the meaning of this one? Don't go too far means what? Uh, 
Huh? That means come back. Huh? You Israel people, they came from Egypt three days journey into the wilderness. After going there, they decided to come back. Imagine huh? if they did not go too far, what would have happened? Huh? They would have immediately turned back. Isn't it? It is indirectly telling, have touch with us. Have contact with us. You see, don't go too far. You don't be too far. Oh, having contact, have fellowship with us. Huh? Dear brethren, some people, you see, compromise for this one. Oh, very good. No? We can be here also. We can be there also. Huh? Both the places we can adjust. We can manage it. No, 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 dear brethren. Huh? What will happen? Huh? Huh? That is not at all easy. He will call us back. He will pull us back to the same thing. You see? Huh? When the people of Israel went so far, they decided to kill Moses and come back. Why? Because there was, what was there? Huh? Only manna. Correct now? Sometimes meat used to be there, but the water used to be there. But in Egypt, what all food was given? Huh? What food was given? What did uh, Pharaoh give with the food? Did you remember, brother? Any idea? What was the food of uh, Pharaoh given to people of Israel? Okay, numbers 14 chapter, brother. Numbers 14 chapter 4 and 4 10, brother. Huh? Numbers 14 4. Uh, one minute, uh, we can write that one. Read Numbers 11 chapter, correct. Numbers 11 chapter, verse 5. Numbers 11 5, brother. Huh? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, Ooh. and cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. Ah, see, what all food, uh, fish is given, water, watermelon, uh, uh, muskmelon, leeks, uh, potatoes, that means onions, garlic, garlic bread is given. <laughs> wow, wow, super tasty food, no? along with fish and all. Here, what is there? All these things are there, nothing. Uh, similarly, Satan will tell, oh, there, what is there in the church also? Big church is there, choir group is there. You see, big organization is there. But what is there here? Nothing is there. Here the truth is there. Here the Lord is there. His presence is here, dear brethren. You see, Satan will try to offer the same thing. Here big influential people are there. You see, big, big people are there. But with us, the Lord of this universe is there, dear brethren. Huh? Their educated people might be there. You see, but here, the people who are educated by God are here, dear brethren. Who were with Jesus? Not many educated, not many wise. They were fishers men. They were low class people. But uh, God uh, yet uh, used them to build the churches in the entire world. Uh, you see, whom has God called? Uh, God has called, not called the riches of this world. He says no, James 2 5. You see? Huh? And uh, where was Jesus is he educated? Uh, did he go to any scholar or theological college uh, or seminar to uh, get a certificate? No. The people of uh, Israel asked them, Who is this fellow? You see? The Bible says that uh, he was a person who, who never went to school. Uh, you see? But uh, you see, this is the God's. Uh, Holy people. Now, what was the reply of Moses? Sir? What did Moses reply, brother? Exodus uh, 8 27, brother. Uh. We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. As he shall command. We will sacrifice to the Lord as he has commanded. He has given us a rule. Set of rules. We should have our sacrifice in that way only and where. Three days journey. Imagine, will anybody travel three days to just to sacrifice to the Lord? Well, some will think it's a fanatic uh, idea. Three days into the wilderness, dear brethren. Imagine, three days, you know, what's the journey of those, those days? One day, journey was 15 miles. So, three days journey means 45 miles. If you convert it into kilometers, more than 80 to 90 kilometers. Uh, Imagine if somebody travel. Yes, if we are God's children, we will travel very far, even for the truth's sake. What does the Bible say? You see, what does the Bible say? Huh? Where the dead bodies are, 
देर वॉट विल हॅपन बदर लुक सेवन चॅप्टर सेस नॉ हा व्हेरी गुड ही गल वाई बिकॉज दॅट डेड बॉडी इज द फूड फॉर दॅट वल्चर if we are the true vultures of god flying very high want to fly very high in spiritual life want to be close to the lord not close to the earth like a serpent eh if we want to overcome the serpent we should we should fly high if we need to fly high we need to eat strong food not vegetarian non vegetarian food with bread meat the meat in strong ha q season strong food day budan if we want to eat we need to travel will the vulture ever think ayyo so far i need to go so far lord i can't travel i'll sit here only you need send door delivery ha huh? no dear budran he gal it identify the food very far it will travel very far just for the sake of food dear budran this is how we should be like moses now after again few more uh, plagues uh, again you see the third uh, eh, you see compromise was given the third compromise is given in exodus 10 chapter exodus 10 chapter verse 8 uh, verse 8 mm. and moses and aaron were brought again unto pharaoh and he said unto them go serve the lord your your god but who are they that shall go uh, see no pharaoh is uh, compromising first what he tell no don't go anywhere you have to do it only second what did he say okay don't go too far huh? third what is saying okay go go huh? but who are all going reader huh? you see huh? uh, you, you know uh, pharaoh tells huh? go but only the men should go read verse 11 brother ah huh? not so go now ye that are men and serve the lord for that ye did desire ah this is what you requested no you wanted the men to be serving the lord you go take only the men worship the lord and go but uh, don't take your wife and children Eh? Now, what is the meaning of this one? Leaving the wife and children, if somebody goes far, what will happen now? What will happen, brother? They will come back. Very good, brother. They will come back. You know, if I go to house station for any you see, spiritual activities, my wife will tell, you know, uh, when are you going to come back? Eh? When are you going to return? My son will ask, Papa, when are you going to return? I'll tell very soon. Eh? I'll tell the date. Why? Because they will be waiting. I will also return. Why? my family is waiting for me similarly satan you know what does it tell you want to go you want to offer sacrifice you want to consecrate to the lord you want to live for the truth you want to live like the truth follow the truth go 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 don't disturb your family don't take your husband don't take your wife don't take your daughters don't take your mummy papa leave them everybody here only only you go that is what you ask no ha eh? that is what you ask no what did moses say no 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 not like that sir we will go how verse 9 brother ha huh? and moses said we will go with uh, our young and with our old and with our sons and with our daughters with our flocks and with our herds will we go for we must hold a feast unto the lord eh? what super dialogue from moses eh what do you say no i am not going to leave anybody we are going to go with our wife children everybody that is the way we should be dear brethren after listening to the truth not only we we want our entire house to worship the lord what did joshua say you do whatever you want but as for we and our family we will worship the lord that is the spirit of you brother not only we our entire family sisters stand for the truth you know satan how does he attack eh? how did he attack adam he know very well that uh, satan could never touch adam so what did he use uh, he used eve he used eve mother eve to attack adam 
Because Adam knew very well that God has told the truth. That means it will definitely fulfill. We should never touch nor eat the fruit. But uh, Satan knew very well that he could never attack Adam. So how was Adam made to fall? Using Eve. This is how dear brethren. What he will do? He will start bringing the friction in the family. One person will listen to the others will not be listening to God. But slowly friction will come. And then what will happen slowly? The mind will get disturbed and uh, Satan will try to pull us back uh, into the false churches. Uh, you see, false system. Uh, what did Jesus say? Uh, he that doesn't love me more than, uh, tell me brother, more than? Parents. Uh, more than father, mm -hmm. mother. Next uh, Brother, eh? sister, then eh? Luke 14, 26, 27. Eh? If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. He cannot be my disciple. You see, we should love the Lord, love everybody. Not that we should love them, not that we should hate them, but we should bring them to the truth. You see, dear brethren, huh? if we, Sunday, every Sunday, if we huh, come for the worship, and if they go to some other place, how harmoniously a family will be there? What is Jesus' prayer? Father, that they may be one, even as we are one. We should be one, standing for the Lord. You see, as a family. Eh? You know, what did uh, Pharaoh say? You know, what does what the Pharaoh said? You know, he threatened Moses, saying, if you take your wife and children, evil will come upon them. Read verse 10, brother. Exodus 10, 10, brother. Uh. And he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you, and I will let you go. And your little ones, look to it, for evil is before you. Evil is before you. Evil will come. You're going in a wilderness. Something will happen. Danger will come. They will all die. You say, fear. This is how Satan is fearing us. Oh, you, if you leave and go, huh? Huh? what will happen? Huh? You will be in the truth. They will be in other churches. Huh? Will they, somebody get married? During marriage, they will ask, no? where are you going? Which church are you going? Then will somebody come? Nobody will marry you. Then what about school admission? Huh? Then uh, what about the burial ground? Uh, who will come and do the funeral? Uh, dear brethren, uh, who did the funeral of our Jesus Christ? Uh, did Jesus think about the uh, huh? burial? Did he ask God, God, I'm going to earth. I'm telling you now only, you should be prepared well. I want to see my grave at before only before I die. Did he ask the one to the Heavenly Father? Eh? Okay. Is Heavenly Father so careless? Is he not even bothered about us, our burial? No, he knows very well, dear brother. He had prepared a graveyard for our Lord Jesus, a rich burial. No man had ever laid a body there, it seems. A new burial ground. Similarly, God has prepared everything for us. You see? Huh? And marriages, sir. If God had made marriage for Adam, he did not leave Adam alone. Huh? Think about other marriages, sir. God, God children never married. Huh? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David. Huh? Everybody, you take any examples in the Bible. You see, God children. So many people in the churches, sir. Peter was married. Huh? You see? Dear brethren, did God uh, leave them alone? No. God had organized marriage for everybody. Timothy, you see? So similarly, God will definitely arrange for us. You see, we are legally equipped to, to do all these things. You see, we are legally registered. You see, legally, we are an entity where uh, we are uh, eligible as per the, you see, dear brethren, the government uh, uh, set up. You see, we are legally entitled to do all these things. Uh, these activities, why? Because we know that uh, God's children cannot live in the churches, in the false system. So we need to have, uh, you see, the dear brethren who is standing for the truth. When we are standing for the truth, there is a group of brethren, not only we, 
thousand thousands of brother are there uh, dear brother anna to see who will stand for the truth who already standing for the truth since many years so we are all have all this uh, facilities uh, but uh, satan tries to distract our mind saying oh something will will happen no nothing uh, dear brother anna you see we should be uncompromising as pharaoh what did uh, uncompromising moses what did moses say Huh? No, we will take entire thing. We should take our family. We should come with our family joyfully to listen to the truth. We should, we should thank the Lord that God has given us the entire family to in the truth of the brethren. If we pray and if we dedicate to the Lord, definitely Lord will lead us. Now, the last compromise, let us read. You see, Exodus 10 chapter, <clears throat> Exodus 10 chapter, <clears throat> verse 24, brother. Huh? What was the last compromise of Pharaoh? Verse 24, to 26 brother huh? and pharaoh called unto moses and said go ye serve the lord only let your flocks and your herds be stayed and let your little ones also go with you ah, see what did he say fourth one go take everything you go entire people go but don't take your flock huh? leave all these things here only why did he say so you know did the uh, people of Israel any prop have any property in Egypt? Did they have any building site? No. No. So which was the property? Their flocks. The flocks. So you're saying you leave your property here and go. Now what did Jesus say? Where your property is there, there what will be there? Your heart is there. Correct, brother. Excellent. That means. He's saying, leave your heart here only and go. You go, 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 physically you go. But let your heart be here only. That means what? You will be sitting and listen to the truth, but your heart will be there. Oh, you, how beautiful it was there. How beautiful it was here. Eh? This only, Tata. This is what disturbed the people of Israel. They came at the border of Egypt, sorry, uh, border of uh, promised land. Border of Israel. You know, what did they do? Eh? If they would have kept quiet, immediately they would have entered the promised land. What happened, you know? What did they do? Huh? They crumbled against the Lord. They tried to stone Moses. They told, you have brought us here to kill, to die. You see, in the wilderness. Uh, huh? Now, that is the time they decided to go back. Why? Their heart was never with them, dear brethren. That's the reason, you see, there's a problem that says, you see, the people of Israel left Egypt, but Egypt never left them. We should not be such people, dear brethren. From our heart, we should leave the things which are abomination to God, we should never touch. You see, what does the Bible say? You know, there are seven things abomination to the sight of God. Do you know the Proverbs it says the seven things which are abomination to God. Proverbs. Proverbs. Uh, chapter 6. 16 to 19. Brother. Proverbs 6, chapter 16 to 19. Brother. The six things doth the Lord hate. <laughs> the seven are an abomination unto him. A proud, ah. a proud look, ah. a lying tongue. Yes, and, I'm the lying tongue. And hands that... Ah, if you're not speaking the truth from your tongue, that means there is no truth. This is abomination. New sight, not in our sight. In God's sight, it is abomination. That's the reason he said. Not everybody who says, Lord, 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 enter the kingdom of heaven. We should try to enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, dear brother, we can't keep our heart there. We should take completely, completely out of it and come out. You see, if you want to enter the land of Canaan, the heavenly Canaan, we need to take out completely even our heart from Egypt. Now, see, what is Moses saying? Uh, verse 25, 26, brother. Huh? And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and bond offerings 
at that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. If we leave our this one flock here, no, where what are we going to offer to the Lord? What are we going to sacrifice to the Lord? Just leaving Babylon is not sufficient. We need to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Even that work has to be done, dear brethren. In the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 16, 16, it says that none should come empty-handed to the temple. They should bring at least something in their hand. We should bring ourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dear brethren. You see, we can't come empty-handed. That is not pleasing to God. God is pleasing and waiting for a... Huh? Pleasant sacrifice. Imagine God is waiting for that sacrifice. Dear brethren, you see, we need to think, uh, you know, uh, how much uh, more days will we make our Lord to wait? Isn't it? Who is important to us? The Lord or the people? Whom you are going to serve? Are we going to serve the Lord? Are we going to serve the people? This was the same question Apostle Paul put. Uh, he said, I never want to. You see, worship the people. You know, the same thought came into his mind. You see, when he was supposed to leave his family, you know, that is the time that he said, I never conferred with, uh, you see, the flesh and blood. Whom, I, whom should I please? Read, brother. Galatians 1. Galatians 1, 10, brother. Galatians 1, 10. For do I now persuade man or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. See, if I please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. We should please Lord. Then, so, now what does the reply? Moses, read with the verse 26. With that, huh? Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not any hope be left behind. For thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God, and we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. Uh, see, what did uh, Moses say? We will not even leave a hoof behind. What is hoof? What is the meaning of hoof? Huh? Any idea about the hoof? You know? Today, we all put uh, shoes, we, human beings. But uh, do animals put shoes, brother? Do animals have shoes? No. Yes. And no also, correct. <laughs> some animals don't have, but some animals have. You know, for a cow or a bullock, the hoof is put. You know, brother, the steel, the metal thing, like a hoof, like U shape, it will come. Have you seen it, brother? Uh, yes. Yes. They put it for the horse also. So the feet might never get damaged because they're hard working, no? So similarly, what did Moses say? You know, don't worry, I'm not going to leave even the footwear of uh, the herds and the flocks. You told, no, you take the, give the flocks, I'm not going to leave them also, neither their shoes. Be strong, we should be in the truth. When Satan tries to distract our mind to serve the Lord. We should say, we am not going to leave even a thread also, a shoelace also. I'm going to take everything and serve the Lord. Dear brethren, we should never compromise to the words of Pharaoh, the God of this world. This is his work. He will try to do and distract our mind. But what we should do? We should try to overcome the brethren. We are not only just two or three brethren, brethren, there are thousands of brethren all over the world, you see, dedicated to the truth, standing for the truth. Till now, God has never forsaken even one brother from the truth. That is our living testimony, how God is leading us in the truth. Brethren. So, in all these things, uh, uh, how do we serve the Lord? Uh? You see, uh, if we invite uh, somebody to our house, you see, if imagine if I invite you all to my house and uh, if you all sit for a dinner, uh, if I keep on serving everybody and uh, don't serve you anything, how will you feel? How will we feel? How will we feel? Tell me. If uh, everybody has served and we are also sitting next to them, we'll waiting, waiting, waiting that uh, they will come and serve us. Uh, but if they don't come and serve us, how will we feel? 
How will we feel? Tell me. We will feel very bad. Very bad. Ultimately, even if they tell, no, no, everything is over. Come on, come on, get up, get up. They are all finished. You are also finished. Now, come on, get up, get up, go wash hands. How will you feel? What? Why would we ever come? That is the way God is seeing in the internet. God is waiting for God's children to leave Babylon. What did he say, Revelation 18:4? Huh? Babylon is fallen, fallen. My children, my children, leave her. Read but Revelation 18:4, brother. Revelation 18:4. Hmm. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Mm. Plagues. Ten plagues came on Egypt. So plague is coming upon these churches. God says, My children, come out of her. I'm waiting for you. Dear brethren, God waited for Lord to come out of Sodom. God is waiting for his children to come out of this Egypt. Why? Very soon, this system will be destroyed. If you want to live the, with the Lord, if you want to rule with the Lord, if you want to live a life which is pleasing to him, okay, we should leave Babylon. Dear brethren, so may the Lord bless these words. So kindly, uh, you see, go through the notes also. I'll be sending the notes on YouTube link. Any doubts, any questions, uh, you can uh, definitely ask. Brother.